Hello, YouTubers. Uh, thank you for sitting through all three videos if you've done so. Uh, this is Robert Briz95 here with Magic the History and my synopsis on the Brothers War. Um, I stayed up all last night getting this all. There was some stuff I noticed that was just kind of worded kind of wrong. Um, I, I wanted to, I, I, to be truthful, I've done like five drafts of this script, so um, I wanted to make sure it was it was perfect. Uh, and if you did watch my videos last night that I filmed, um, the foil Geralt's Messenger is for trade. Everything I pull, I mean, even if I pull a Sorn, it'll probably just go straight into my trade binder. So, um, like I said, I'm not too attached to any of these cards. I mean, they're cool and all, but I'll, I'll get them eventually. I'm, I, I, I like to focus on current decks and whatnot. Um, so, anyway, uh, let's get on with the Brothers War. Um, get some coffee really quick. Got the big cup today, so... All right, I'm just going to read straight from my script because um, it's early for me. I had a late night doing uh, doing this, and uh, my brain is mushy. But, and I'll do interspersed com uh, comment. But, uh, okay, so I have a Brothers War synopsis here. Uh, the Brothers War opens on a battlefield the night before the end of the world over the bodies of two fallen giants. The massive machine and wood giants had destroyed one another and were now in the meeting place for one of the lieutenants of the armies preparing for battle. Ashnod, the, unca the uncaring, and Thanos meet to discuss matters uh, and reminisce about the war that brought them to that field. The main story opens at an archaeological dig site a few decades earlier. The head arch archaeologist, Takasia, sits at her table examining an ancient relic a metal skull. When uh, the supply caravan from the city arrives to the camp, Takasia meets two brothers around the age of ten. The older boy, lean and tawny-haired, is Urza, while the dark-haired and stocky younger brother is Mishra. Urza tells Takasia that he and Mishra were born on the same year, uh, he on the first day, Mishra on the last, so that on the last day they were equal. <clears throat> Takasia takes the boys into the camp to teach them her archaeology. From the beginning, Urza and Mishra show a great aptitude for the study of artifacts, machines, artifacts, machines left over from the mysterious Thran people, uh, and also show a violent capacity for argument curbed only by Takasia. So they're kind of like me and my brother when we were younger. But uh, um, if anyone watched my last video, the Thran were that utopian society that existed, you know, a while before any of this took place. So. Like, it's, it's, like, when we first, you know, I mean, it's like discovering robot artifacts now. Excuse me. <clears throat> Over the next six years, the brothers grow up in the camp, Urza becoming lean, wiry, and developing an encyclopedic mind for mechanics. Mishra grew muscular, learning to spend time with the native Falage diggers, drinking with them and learning their legends. They become permanent residents of the camp. After receiving word that their father died and their stepmother does not send for them after the discovery and rebuilding of the ancient flying machine and ornithopter on Mishra's birthday, the brothers have a vicious argument over who gets to fly at first. In the end, Urza wins, but both, tur uh, both get a turn. The bird's eye view allows them to view pictographs on the desert, leading to the discovery of large artifact deposits. These discoveries point to a mountainous region that Urza believes was the heart of the Thran civilization, by which the desert natives think is haunted. So that's the caves of Kolios, and uh, the mountainous range was where the city of Halicon, I think, is it Halicon? Halicon was um, mounted, where the, the caves of Kolios were referred to as the Caves of the Damned, and, you know, the gate to Phyrexia is there, being clo held closed by the Power Stone, uh, which will, you know, later be split too. Um... Uh, it was also the main site for the original Phyrexian uh, Thran War. So, uh, Urza, Mishra, and Takasia fly to the ruined Thran city, but are attacked by a rock along the way, a pterodactyl type thing. Um, a lot of rock along the way. At the heart of the ruined city, a cave entrance leads down past uh, troves of machines to a pedestal with a large crystal set into the... <clears throat> Pardon me. <laughs> <clears throat> Set into the middle. 
Accidentally, the brothers break the stone in half, and each has a differing vision uh, when they end, each end with a half in his grasp. So, later speculation, a lot of the later novels was that the this was all preordained to happen. The power stones, which were normally nearly indestructible, didn't break by mere touch. But it was in, in later stories they say that it was probably predestined, and a lot of the, it was mainly in the, a lot of the anthology novels. They say it was mainly preordained that this happens because it's the beginning of what leads Urza to become a planeswalker, and the whole fire exit thing was all preordained, and it was so that's why the stone split when they picked it up. It you know, it turned into the might and the weak stone. So, they, yeah, anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Urza sees a world of metal, cables, and machines with many melting and burning forms. Mishra saw a long hallway made of lizard skin with tiny figures of screaming beings made of gold and mirrors showing him twist, twisted images of a monster. When they awake from their visions, they see the automatons on the hall come to life and attack them. They discover Mishra's stone weakens the weakens the machines while Urza strengthen, strengthens them. After escaping, Urza and Mishra get into a heated argument when Urza takes Mishra's stone in frustration. Urza lashes his hand out to return the stone while Mishra steps into his reach and is struck in the forehead with the stone. Uh, this re results in a falling out between the brothers. So it's something as simple as that is what causes the brothers to hate each other and sows the seeds of the brothers' war. Uh, in the months after, the brothers remained angry. In the, I'm sorry. In the months after, the brothers remained angry. Urza deems his stone the might stone for its ability to strengthen, and Mishra is the weak stone for its ability to weaken. Uh, one night, an argument between the brothers escalates to a violent pitch where they begin using the powers of the stones on one another. Takasia rushes in to stop them and is caught in the crossfire and killed. In grief and pain at the accusations of his older brother, Mishra flees into the night. Without Takasia's leadership, the camp disbands, and the students and workers return to their homes. After the deadly, uh, after the deadly night, Urza leaves the camp without knowing of his brother's whereabouts. In the city of Krug, capital of the... Uh, neighboring kingdom of Yosha, he becomes a clockmaker's apprentice and first meets Kayla bin Krug, the Yoshan princess. After fixing a musical box of sentimental value, upon learning that a Thran book is a part of the princess's dowry, he builds a mechanical man to win a contest set forth by Kayla's father to find her a strong suitor. The mechanical man moves a massive jade statue and Urza wins the contest. The warlord father is initially infuriated that Urza wins the contest, but is persuaded to allow this marriage when he realizes that he can use Urza's knowledge for himself. So, <clears throat> the uh, I believe it's the the Thrand home that he's looking for. I, there was a card for it. Um, if you know, let me know. I don't remember what the card does, but uh, uh, meanwhile, Mishra is enslaved by the desert people. He has made a tutor for the son of the ruling tribe's chief. The son is initially uninterested in learning arithmetic or other languages, and Mishra despairs that he will be demoted, though his friend uh, Hajar knows failure will mean death. So, hold on, i got to check this here. I'm using my damn camera. Uh, Failure will mean death. Like many previous tutors who failed before him, Mishra manages to befriend the boy by telling him many legends and stories. However, Mishra is still a slave that will be executed upon the completion of the boy's education. One night, a massive mechanical dragon attacks the tribe, killing the chieftain. Mishra tames it with his stone and is promoted from a slave to being a wizard and advisor to the, his son. To the son, I'm sorry who succeeds his father as chieftain. We later discovered that that was a Phyrexian dragon engine. Um, I, I, should, I should have these cards out so I can show you. Um, should do that next time. Um, not a very useful card. Uh, to be truthful, most of the cards back in the day were pretty pretty poop. Um, uh, Milo the Great One had a really good video about it, like cards like Leviathan, and I mentioned one, Craw Giant, which was just 
you know, back in the day, we think of these cards like, yeah, I'm going to play it because it's big and nasty. And we have, like, they call them the brick deck. Um, so I, I kind of miss the days of the brick deck. Uh, EDH comes close, but I remember having brick decks that were just so insanely big that the games would take... I mean, we would have rules like building our own armies and, and then wait till we could attack with the armies and whatnot. And then use our cantrips and, and interrupts cards that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I'll, maybe I'll do a video about that. Um, with the Krugian Warlord's uh, patronage, Urja begins a school for the creation of many devices and takes on an apprentice, Tanos. Mishra takes on his apprentice, Ashnod, when the Desert Falage people begin their war against the other kingdoms. Urza's Yoshin kingdom and Mishra's Falaji begin to war. But, a, but hold a peace talk. The brothers are reunited, but the Krugian warlord uses the peace talks as a pretense to launch a surprise attack against his, hate, against his hated, Falaji, <laughs> hated Falaji enemies. The Krugian warlord is killed by the Falaji chieftain in the ensuing battle. Do bear in mind that when I wrote this last night, I had about seven shots of whiskey. Uh, so if none of this makes sense, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of it is kind of, I mean, I, I got, thought I got it to perfection, but as I'm reading this again, uh, I realized that in my altered state, I probably shouldn't have done it, but it was good whiskey. Uh, anyway, and then I went and played Mass Effect 3, the demo, so. Hmm. Uh, a war erupts, but another peace talk is held, and Urza and Mishra attempt to reconcile their broken relationship. However, the talks break down where Mishra has Kayla steal Urza's stone and and sleeps with her. With the aid of his war machines, Mishra escapes into the desert. Urza mounts a search for his brother in hopes of getting revenge, leading to another war. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like we got some adultery in the in the uh, in the waters here. After an unsuccessful attack by Urza's ornithopter patrols on a false war camp, Mishra attacks the Krugian capital with three of his dragon engines. Uh, he found two more and tamed them. Uh, the Falaji chieftain attempts to kill Ashnod during the attack on the city, but fails and is killed by her instead. In the caverns where the stones were found, men who worship machines met a mostly mechanical demon from another world. He called himself Gix, and they did as well. So Gix was kind of a leftover throwback from the original Thran War. Uh, he was trapped on Dominaria when the gate was sealed to Phyrexia. Um, and the the original Phyrexians don't really didn't really look like uh, how we know them now. Um, they were they were more mechanical than the organic mechanical type thing we, we see. Like now they kind of look like weird H.R. Geiger creations. Like if you really if anyone knows who H.R. Geiger is, he created the the aliens from the Aliens movies, and he. Well, to be fair, a lot of his art does, um, well, I mean, the original alien design had a huge phallus coming out of his forehead, so, yeah, I have the H.R. Geiger cop. it's some twisted crap. Uh, it's like H.R. Geiger meets Clive Barker art, you know, um, that's how the Fire Extends look now. Back, originally, they were more Borg-like, you know, they were more like the Borg from Star Trek, The Next Generation, you know, they were man-machine hybrids, and... You know, they, they were still kind of twisted, but not as twisted as they are now. So, uh, Mishra becomes the new leader of the Falaji and builds himself an army of automatons to increase his military power. Urza flees the, the now-conquered Krug and is appointed protector of the realm by an alliance formed against the Falaji by the kingdoms of Argive and Corlys. Tano springs Urza's wife and newborn son, possibly nephew... <laughs> ding 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 anyway to him and together they begin to build an opposing army to Mishra Ashnod builds her own army of brainwashed and surgically altered slaves and criminals the transmogrants to fight Ashnod's transmogrant it's a it wasn't a very useful card it was kind of a funny looking card which is what Ashnod's altar is useful but Ashnod's transmogrant it was also Ashnod's coupon uh uh, to fight. The war con uh, continues for decades, which east side participating in an arms race to build more effective weapons. 
Ashnod is exiled from Mishra's side, while Lauren joins a group of scholars in unlocking the power of magic in the city of Teresia when Mishra invades. Two of the dragon engines vanish into thin air. The Brotherhood of Gix infiltrates both sides and plays them against each other while winning uh, more power in Mishra's court. Mishra is secretly offered a method of gaining more power through artifice by the Brotherhood. That's when he gets uh, far exified. Uh, Urza's son Habr uh, Harbin finds an island finds an island of Argoth ru uh, ruled by elves who worship the goddess Gaia and was uh, secretly aided to return to land by an elf. In a ploy to bring the brothers together, Gix gives information on the secret island to a member of the Brotherhood. Urza and Mishra both learn that this island is rich in resources like lumber and ore. Because their war has stripped the continent of resources and polluted the land, they bring their armies to the island in the hopes of gaining the upper hand and ending the war decisively. Both armies exterminate the natives of the island. So even though Urza was kind of a uh, a uh, good guy, as it were, uh, like most wars um, and most warlords who have quote-unquote good intentions, uh, the side effects of their war was the continent was pretty well decimated. I mean, we'll get to it later, especially with uh, Urborg. I mean, it went from being a vast area to a nasty pit, uh, and then later a tomb for Yogmoth. Anyway, uh, Urza's... Uh, blah, blah, blah. In the final battle of the war, the brothers' armies fight to a stalemate. Urza meets Mishra upon the battlefield, but Mishra has been warped into an amalgamation of machine and man by Gix. The Phyrexian demon Ash... Or, I'm sorry... Uh, by uh, man and machine by Gix, the Phyrexian demon. Ashnod sends the Golgarthian Silex to Urza to end the war while she fights the demon Gix. Urza, suddenly awakening to the power of magic, uses the Golgarthian Silex to unleash an enormous blast to destroy his brother and Gix. The blast destroys the island, ends the war, and upsets the climate of Dominaria, ushering in a new Ice Age. Gix escapes through a portal to the plane of Phyrexia. Urza becomes a planeswalker, a godlike being capable of traversing between worlds, and the Might Stone and Weak Stone become his eyes. Regretting the destruction of he has unleashed upon the world, Urza uses his newfound powers to leave Dominaria and travel the world uns to worlds unseen. So I, I mistakenly did the whole Urza cycle, uh, which is fine. Um, but I'm gonna go. Talk, I'm still gonna talk more about it. That's that's basically a synopsis of the whole Brothers War. We'll keep going further into it. There's more stuff. I want to talk more about the the subtle nuances between Urza and Mishra and Ashnod and Thanos and Harbin and all that other stuff and then his 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 journeys to the Elf Island and whatnot. So uh thank you for watching and um uh, you know rate, comment and subscribe. Um thank you for sitting through this. I'm sorry it went out a lot longer than it did. Um the next video will be more about the Brothers War. Um I really it was one of my favorite cycles so um yeah uh and if you get a chance check out any of the anthologies. Tapestry is a really good one. Um Tapestries is a really good one. Um, Distant Plains is another really good one. Um, and if you haven't read them yet, I recommend The Path of the Planeswalkers no uh, graphic novels. Um, I haven't read the second one yet. I'm going to go out and probably get it um, either today or sometime this next coming week um, from... Since Borders shut down, probably Barnes & Noble. <gasps> Excuse me. Um, and, uh, you know, give it a read and maybe I'll do a book review. It was really... The first one was really, really good. The art style was just insane. So, anyway, uh, so um, yeah, like I said, rate, comment, subscribe, sub rate, comment, and subscribe. And uh, please do feel free to uh, you know offer your opinions. Yeah, it won't hurt my feelings. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, everything you saw that I opened last night is for trade, including the Geralt's Messenger foil. That was a complete surprise to me. Paid for those packs. So, uh, yeah, until next time, YouTube, it's been Robert Brizzenai5 here with uh, Magic the History.